Hawaii. They're all endemic to the Hawaiian Islands, meaning they don't occur anywhere else in the world but here. And uh, Kuele is endemic to the main Hawaiian Islands. It doesn't occur in the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. The problem with OPE is that the fisheries crash. Uh, since 1900, there's been approximately a tenfold decrease in the commercial harvest of OPE. Um, in 1978, there was a restriction placed on the harvest where you can't um, pick OPE that are reproductively immature. Uh, and really you can see that there hasn't been much of an effect. So it seems like the OPE populations are not recovering. One answer to help OPE populations recover is to uh, implement MPAs, or marine protected areas. Uh, marine protected area is an area where you basically don't take at least OPE and basically you don't take anything. You allow nature to uh, take its course with minimum human interference. MPA in, uh, the term, in terms of fisheries management is successful if there's that spillover effect. And OPD is a great animal to test the concept of MPAs with because the adults don't move that much. They're going to stay in one place. Um, they're not going to move out of the MPA. And, but the juveniles can move a great deal. So when the OPD reproduce, the juveniles go out to the water column and they can repopulate shores that are not protected. So just to demonstrate this uh, visually, uh, we have some areas that are protected, other areas that get harvested, and as you guys know, it's every area that has OPD that's not protected is going to get harvested, and maybe some of these are going to get harvested too. Uh, so you end up with these two populations where there's still some OPD left. Everywhere else the OPD are gone in this particular year. Um, the OPD spawn, and if there's no barriers to dispersal, then the OPD will um, repopulate all the possible areas that they can get to. Um, that's a highly idealized idea. But consider if there's um, population structure, which means that there's no recruits, or there's no OPD uh, migrating across this boundary for whatever reason. Uh, in which case, if your marine protected areas are all in a region, are all in one population, there's no marine protected areas in another region of reproductive connectivity, then once um, every place gets harvested, you only have recovery in one of the population areas and not all of the population areas. So that's why population structure is really important for marine protected areas and uh, fisheries management and species management. Now how do we identify these population boundaries? Um, with something like an EEV or even an adult OP, you could throw a tag on it and you could release it into the wild and then try to recapture it at various locations. And you can kind of get an idea of where are these animals going. Uh, the problem is adult OPD don't move. It's the juveniles that move a great deal. And they're approximately uh, 200 microns long, or uh, two tenths of a millimeter. In which case, it's very difficult to put a tag on these guys. So instead, what we're doing is we're looking at their DNA and using the DNA as an identification tag. So what we do is we look at the uh, DNA sequence or the allele identity in a variety of individuals at given locations. And we look at the frequency with which those particular sequences are popping up in the individuals. How many individuals have sequence A, B, C, D, E, or F? And within a population, you'd expect that the frequencies of these different alleles or haplotypes would be essentially the same. But across the population boundary, you would expect different frequencies. This is essentially what we're doing when we're testing for structures. We're looking for differences in the frequencies of the uh, alleles or haplotypes. Um, I've, did a pre I've done a previous study with Brendan Holland, Brian Bowen, and Rob Tillman where we looked at mitochondrial DNA loci. Um, and what we did was we sequenced OP on the Big Island, on Molokai, on uh, Kauai, and then each of the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. And these are the major population boundaries. It's like a solid line right here for uh, the Kauai. There's no, there's no dispersal between Oahu and, and Kauai because the, the DNA sequences on either side of that boundary are completely different. There's no shared sequences. So we can reliably uh, con conclude that there's little uh, migration there on the scale that's relevant to fisheries management. At the other end of the spectrum, here on Molokai for the Blackfoot OPD, we have like a very thin dashed line, which means we found some structure, um, but there are shared haplotypes across this boundary between Oahu, between the Big Island and Molokai. So there's 
possibly um, some um, migration going on on the scale of uh, thousands of years or hundreds of years. But on a scale of year to year, it seems fairly unlikely that we're going to have migration between these areas for the black for the peak. And uh, the other kind of main break um, for OP is between Gardner Pinnacles and the other Northwest Plains, <coughs> where there's there are some shared haplotypes, but the, the allele frequencies are highly different between these two sites. So that's a fairly major break. The thing with mitochondria is that, as I said, it's thousands of years, hundreds of years. It's a very long time scale. We're interested in fisheries management. Um, what's the possibility of getting repopulated from year to year? So we're moving from mitochondrial DNA now to microsatellite DNA. And the thing with microsatellite DNA is they're highly polymorphic. They mutate pretty quickly. And with mitochondrial DNA, they also mutate fairly quickly. But there's one locus. There's basically one unit of DNA that's changing. Um, there's no independence in the mitochondrial DNA. So once you kind of look at one DNA, um, one mitochondrial DNA sequence, there's not really much point in looking at more 